before we jump into this video, I have to show you guys some close up product shots of the products that we're going to be using in today's video. So using our VI Super Bonder to make our spikes and I'll explain that later on in the video. Our VI's Extended Retention Adhesive, you guys already know this is the go to. This is just the goat right here. You need this adhesive, it's super affordable and I always ask that the retention is fire and it is. Using our Master Pro 90 degree angle tweezer. This has been my new favorite tweezer, especially for when I'm making spikes because it just it just it just works girl just just go get it don't even ask we're also going to be using our 0.05 in our premium lashes i didn't show that because i'm going to explain those later on in this video but yeah let's just dive right into it i'm going to be showing you guys how i create my spikes to stand out against my sets so this would be considered like a hybrid or even a wet strip lash set these have been really really popular for me lately and the number one question i get in my dms all the time is how do i get the spikes to really stand out against the set so I wanted to go ahead and do like a little tutorial showing you guys exactly how I do that it is super easy um, it, it's really really fast it's just all about applying the prop it's all about applying the technique and applying it to your clients natural lashes so as you can see here that beautiful texture that's peeping through it looks like a really pretty strip lash. It literally looks like I bought this from like Walgreens or something, like a strip lash lash. And these are super popular right now. A lot of the girlies have been liking these sets. I have been loving these sets so much and I just love the way these spikes stand out so much and just give that flattering strip lash fluffy effect, okay? So super easy, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first is that I'm going to be taking our VI's Premium Lashes and .05. It is super important that you're using 0.05 lashes only. I know some girls like to use 0.03s when they're making their fans or even 0.07s. I personally like to use 0.05. The reason being is because 0.05 is the perfect weight and diameter to create a really chunky like spike but without applying too much weight. Sometimes I'll use 0.07s depending if that client has really nice thick natural lashes, but majority of the time they don't and to ensure the safety and the weight of your client's natural lash, we're going to be using 0.05s. Uh, majority of the time too, you want these spikes to stand out. Okay, you don't want them to get lost in the set, so they need to be longer than the rest of the lashes. So for me, majority of my spikes are like the longest length and then I'll drop down four sizes. That is also the key to making sure your spikes stand out. You could even double it and do like five to six sizes longer, which I've seen, um, but that's just a little too dramatic for me. I like my sets to look dramatic, but also really natural at the same time. Hence like this set right here. Um, so these are 19s all the way to create the spikes. And then we're just dropping down two sizes um, when we get into the inner corner. So you can see here, it really elongates the eye shape and then kind of drops back down and we see the spike in the inner corners and then it goes out towards the outer corner, okay? So using our 19s, I'm gonna go ahead and place this on my tray. Um, this is my premium lashes as well using our VI's 95 degree angled gold tweezer. This is my favorite tweezer to use when I'm taking off lashes and isolating as well. So we are going to be taking our VI's super bonder to create these spiked sets, okay? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to use the tip of this applicator with what already is already on the applicator. I'm just going to push this to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to squeeze anything out. I'm not going to like squeeze the little dropper. All I'm going to do is use the remaining product that's on the dropper and just glide it across the lashes. And it's a pretty good amount. As you can see, they're already closing up and already creating the spikes. So just a little bit more kind of running it across a little bit halfway. Boom. Close that back up. Get our glue ready. Using a, you could either use a um, glue ring or a flowering cup, whichever you prefer. I've already pre shinken my glue on my Vortex. So we're just gonna go ahead and do a bead of glue. I'm also gonna take a spoolie and I'm going ahead and gonna run this across the lashes to kind of create smaller spikes. 
just like that. Okay, and as you guys can see, focus, boom. And there you go, it already created the spikes for me. Okay, so the trick is, and I'm gonna be using my VI's volume tweezer for this. This is like my new favorite go-to tweezer. You guys probably seen this in another video of mine. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, and I love the fact that it's like this super 90 degree angle tweezer. You wanna use a 90 degree angle tweezer when you are trying to create these spikes. It's just gonna help you so much better and it's gonna be easier to create. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in whatever section that you want. I'm going to hold the lash. So I'm gonna grab, not from the tip of the strip and not of the tip of the lash, but kind of in the middle, a little bit more higher. Grabbing any section that you want. So let's take this little guy right here. Kind of weed it out a little bit. Grab it from the middle, pull towards you. And already you could see the tip of that spike. But to ensure that your spike is gonna stay nice and closed, I kind of will go ahead and go in the middle and pull in. And then I'll go ahead and drag in so that I'm getting rid of the excess glue. So that way the belly or the middle of our spike stays nice and closed. And then you can just put it on top of your little sponge. There you have it. I can turn it around. And as you can see, that spike is nice and pointy. Let's do it again. You're gonna go ahead and grab as many. So let's just let's let's just say we wanted to create an even bigger spike, which I typically don't like to do. I don't like my spikes too too fat, but fat enough. So You kind of need to wiggle, be careful. Like take your time when you're creating spikes at first. Okay, grabbing it nice and flush where that belly is at, pulling towards me. Again, when we're dipping into our glue, we're going in the center and letting that fan close, letting that spike close. And then dipping again all the way in as if it was a classic lash and dipping all the way out to get rid of any excess glue. You don't want too much glue because be careful if you put too much glue on extension, it could seep down that natural lash and into your client's skin, clogging a pore and causing irritation. Boom. Weed them out. Grab in the center, pull towards you. Get that belly nice and wet so that they stay nice and closed. Angle your extension and your tweezer. Be careful when you're doing this though. Oh, my glue is getting gooey. It's getting cold in here. I had to turn off the heater. So if you see that, it's because my glue is, it's cold, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, I want you to be aware though when you are creating these spikes that when you're dipping in halfway that you are being precautious to not grab the extension where the glue is. So what I mean is if we're covering the glue about here, you don't wanna move your tweezer down because then you'll get it stuck and then you'll have to remove it and put it in acetone. Be careful making sure that when you dip in that you let it sit and you're angling your hand to grab the extension more towards the tip of the, of the extension. Does that make sense? You're using your tweezer to grip higher so that you're not getting this stuck onto your tweezer because that's happened to me before. And then you're just placing it down. Okay. Okay, you can angle it a little bit so that it doesn't and there we go. Okay, so now that we've seen how to create our spikes, we have to know and we have to see how are we gonna make them stand out like this. So just because we have one spike there doesn't mean it's gonna particularly stand out so, so much. So what I like to do is I'll go ahead and create these really pointy spikes. And once I'm done with that, with whatever lashes I have left over, I will then go ahead and brush out majority. And as you can see, those lashes start to fluff up again. And that's kind of what we want. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a spike. Let's get rid of this excess here. And now, I don't know if you guys can see, but that one is a little bit more open. Do you see how it's a little bit more fluffier at the tip? That's what we want. Again, going in halfway, dragging through, pulling it in, angling our tweezer so that we're grabbing it more at the top. And as you can see, the tip is not so close. It's a little bit more open. That is okay because this is now creating texture. And what I'm gonna do is either place this right next to a lash, a natural lash that's right next to our spike or go underneath it. And now you're creating thickness and texture. Do you see now how we have a little bit of fluffiness around the edge of that spike so that it's creating depth and darkness in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some, pull towards me. Oh, that was a bad one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead fish out some lashes as much as I want. Probably about, I can't even give a, a number, you guys. You just honestly kind of have to eyeball it. Not too much, I wanna say maybe like eight to 10 lashes. Pull towards you, it's kind of fluffy, and that's okay. Again, going in more at the center, letting that fan close, and then adjusting my wrist angle. So I'm grabbing it more at the tip. And then we're gonna put that one on the opposite side. Either underneath or right next to another natural lash where the spike is. So those really textured, super closed, super spiked lashes usually are gonna go at the top layer. So I would say you're applying these to the either the lash underneath or the lash next to it. So probably like the bottom layer. So probably the next layer underneath this spike. Okay. And then when we turn it over, you kind of want this one to There we go. Okay. And there you have it. And that's what's gonna make that spike stick out like this. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and apply those other spikes next to these ones and then I'll come right back on. And that's how you would make your spikes stand out a lot. So now you would just go ahead and add your wide or your narrow fans in a length maybe four to three times shorter, and that's going to create the more texture. So what I mean by that is I'll go ahead. Since I did 19, we'll go ahead and do 14s. And we'll create some narrow fans. Okay, all right. So this is what it's gonna look at at your view. It's gonna look funny and it's gonna look stiff, but when you go ahead and see it from their view with their eyes nice and open, you'll see the texture starting to play through. And there you have it. That's also another tip for to make these spikes stand out is putting really small fluffy fans 
at a smaller length. So as you can see, there's a pretty big height difference between this lash and this lash. And that's also gonna help make those spikes stand out. But the best way is layering spikes to make sure that they stand out really, really nicely. You also wanna make sure that you're avoiding sticky. So making sure that you're isolating in between these spikes, making sure you're letting that fan or that spike dry a little bit before you let your tweezers go and you move on to the next one. So that is how you're gonna create this beautiful textured set. Boom. Maybe if we just put it against, as you could see here, it would kind of like, let's see, let's line it up with the spike. Kind of like that. There you have it. Alrighty guys, there you have it. That's exactly how you would go ahead and create this beautiful spiked set and how to make your spike stand out. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you learned something. Please comment down below if I explain things right. You guys know I'm always like making sure that I do. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. All items that I used in this video will be linked down below as well. Don't forget to use code Julia10 at checkout for money off your VI's order. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in my next video.